We have the same section from tutorial 1, 300 by 600, with uh, 315 M's. So the area of steel is uh, 600 millimeters squared. And today we're going to assume that the, uh, the moment on this section is exceeding the cracking moment. And when that happens, like, like we said uh, before, the uh, bottom fibers will no longer be effective. So the only part of the concrete section that's effective would be what I'm hatching here, the top compression fibers and the transformed uh, rebar that's transformed into an equivalent uh, concrete section. And we trans when we transform the rebar into an equivalent concrete section, we can use N times the area of steel now because before we used n minus one because there was concrete below that we were displacing but now the concrete's ineffective so it's not only n in this case and uh, we worked that out it's uh, 8.11 times 600 4,866 millimeters squared so let's uh, work out the neutral axis uh, and use static moments. And we'll take moments about the neutral axis, which is an unknown, C in this case. So above we got this area times its centroidal distance, so that's 300 times C times C over 2 equals the area of the transform section below and that's 4866 millimeters squared times D 550 minus C so we can just uh, work that out, it's a quadratic equation and I'm just going to enter it into the uh, oh wait a second, what do I do? library we'll go to solve mode and then we'll put this equation in. So we'll say uh, y equals 300 c squared over 2. We'll say c is x, so that's 150 c squared. 150 times x squared and then bring this to the other side. Minus 4,866 times 550 minus x. So that's the equation, and then we can go into um, in, into solve mode. So it's already worked it out. 118.335. I'm just going to put it to zero and, re and just make sure and resolve it. 118. 118.335. So C equals 118.3 millimeters. 118.3. And now we can work out the inertia and its uh, cracked mode inertia. So I cracked equals the uh, rectangular moment inertia 112 uh, b c cubed which is uh, 300 times 118.3 cubed over 12 plus its ad squared component 300 times 118.3 times d squared or it, the centroidal d squared which is 118.3 over 2 squared and then what's below the neutral axis we got the uh, transformed area 4866 times 550 minus 118.3 give us this distance 550 minus that so 550 minus 
0.3 and that's squared. So we'll go back to home, home mode, and then 300 times 118.3 cubed divided by 12 plus 300 times 118.3 times 118.3 times a half squared <coughs> plus 48.66 times 550 times 3 squared. So the cracking moment of inertia, when I punch this all out, it comes up to 1.07 times 10 to the 9th millimeters to the 4th. So let's compare it to the, um, the gross moment of inertia. When we assume the whole section was effective and the transformed steel was also effective, we had a, a gross inertia of 6, 7, 8, 5.6 to the 9th. <coughs> and now when it's cracked, it reduces to 1.07 to the 9th. Um, it, less area, so less area of uh, concrete available, so lower inertia. But unlike the fact that before the carrying capacity was limited to 63.2, now that it's post-cracked, we can actually go to a higher uh, uh, moment and make uh, more use of the working steel. So we can really any any moment that's above uh, 63.2, the cracking moment, anything that's above this value would be fine. So moment cracking was 63.2, and then for this case we're gonna have a moment service something above it. We'll say uh, 70 kilonewton meters. And as long as the uh, moment is not high high enough to make this uh, section go into any kind of inelastic behavior, as long as we have a straight line behavior, then it's it's valid to um, to use this theory to solve for uh, stresses uh, for any m moment above the cracking moment. So we could work out the stresses in the concrete and the uh, and the steel now. Um, but let's leave that for the the next tutorial. Let's let's leave that for tutorial. Um, 2.2